Okay, folks, Ethan Van Skyver chimed in on a clip of my previous video talking about ISOM number two and how much revenue I expected to make. Now, what he had to say was this. ISOM number two, I personally believe, will gross $4.2 million. I had previously thought he had said $4.5 million, but he's saying $4.2 million. However, it doesn't need to do that at all. The first campaign benefited from a lot of curiosity and hype plus the merch. The first campaign grossed $3.7 million. If the second campaign does $2.5 million or even less, it's finding its audience and settling in quite satisfactorily. That's a lot of money. Now, he's saying the $2.5 million comes from my prior estimate saying that that is the bare minimum that ISOM number two needs to pull in. It has to pull in 2.5 million or it's already on its way out. And the reason I'm saying that, and I, and I don't think this is what got across because it's definitely not coming across in the clip of my video that was made. If you go back and watch the entire video, you get to see the basis for why I'm making the claim. $2.5 million is what ISOM number two would, make, would need if every person who bought a copy of ISOM number one bought a copy of ISOM number two. And I fully expect that every person who bought a copy of ISOM number one will buy a copy of ISOM number two. Now, why is that? Well, because all of the people who bought ISOM number one were well aware that this was part one of a, at least a two-part story. It was advertised as ill-advised part one. So all of the people who bought in to number one should have known from the get-go that they'd be buying number two. And since we're talking about $50 commitments here, that's, that's not a small chunk of change. $50 is $50. That's, that's a lot of money. That's, you know, several, that's, that's a nice, uh, that's a quarter of my grocery bill for the month, at least. So to spend that amount of money requires commitment. And basically, what any drop below $2.5 million, and, and understand, $2.5 million includes the amount of merch and multiple copies that people would be buying. So to go $2.5 million or below is actually saying that that's including the merch total. And that would mean that if you can't even get there, I mean, that's basically saying that you've lost 20% of your audience about by, by that point, because let's look at it. Uh, I'm estimating that there's going to be about half a million to $600,000 of merch purchased for the ISOM number two campaign. A $2.5 million gross haul then with $600,000 with, with $600, of merch in there means that as far as single issue buyers goes, you only got $1.9 million of that. And that's about roughly 80% of your original audience. That would mean that 20% of your original audience thought your comic book was so bad that even though they went in and bought it with the idea that, you know, I'm going to be committed not just for number one, but also for number two, they're breaking that commitment. And that's not a good sign. And not only is that going to be a signal to all of, or, or that, that's, that's going to be a signal not just to the people who, you know, are, are dissing ISOM. That's going to be a signal to all the people who are buying ISOM and giving them permission to let go of it as well. Because when 20% of your audience basically says, you know what, this is such crap, I can't even buy, I can't even buy another issue. That, that's not good. I mean, this, this, isn't, this isn't like I can afford to buy, you know, a $6 comic book off the rack, and that's not going to break my pocketbook if it doesn't turn out good and I don't want to buy issue number two. But if I've committed $50 to a number one issue, and, and I know that it's part one of two, then I'm not, in my mind, just committing to $50. I'm committing to $100 because I know I'm going to want to see where the story goes. And I do. I do want to see where the story goes. Even if I were not making critique videos, I would still buy a copy of ISOM number two because even though I made 12 videos criticizing ISOM number one, it was still good enough that I wanted to see where it goes from here. And that's the, that's the reason why I make my initial assumption that everybody who bought a copy of number one is going to buy a copy of number two. And that's where I got my $2.5 million baseline from. I'm basically saying everybody, even if you don't think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, you still want to see where it goes from here. 
But if I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong to the tune of 20% of ISOM number one's audience, that's not a good sign. So that's where I kind of disagree with, with Ethan Van Skyver from. He's saying that it'll be finding its audience. And I, uh, to, to some extent, that's true. But for a fan base who bought into ISOM number one, not really for the quality of the work, because we didn't get exposed to the quality of the work except for some unlettered pages. We don't know, or the, these are people who really bought in on the hype and the hope and the desire to see something that could compete with the big two. And if 20% of your audience is basically saying you failed so utterly that I am not even going to carry through with my commitment to buy number two of your comic, that's just, it's not a good sign. And, and I would say that, yeah, I, I'm going to stick with my assessment that if, that if I saw number two, or number two does 2.5 million or less, that's, that's a bad enough sign that we should look for ISOM to fold in the next, or, or the, the Ripperverse to fold in the next couple of years. So um, anyway, I would love to be able to continue this conversation on Twitter where, where Ethan Van Skyver chimed in, but unfortunately I got permaban from there. So if uh, anybody wants to take up the baton, please feel free to follow me over to gab.com where I am currently making my social media residence and uh, hit me up there with your arguments. And uh, other than that, please do subscribe so that you'll get more videos, and, and just in case we carry on the conversation in video form. And uh, other than that, I will talk to you later.